Hi, I'm Todd Gillisey from Gilla Games. Thank you for playing Rising Star 2. This video is about a big new update that I've been working on for a few months now with a lot of help from uh, players like you helping test, uh, bug fixes, ideas for new features, and game balance. Just making sure that it's, it's all good before we put it out there for everybody. So if you've been playing for a while, but you haven't played recently, then these changes uh, could be a little bit um, jarring unless you know what to expect. I'm just gonna go down a list of some of the things that are the highlights of this, this update. You can now travel to different regions, in particular, Europe. So if you, if you go to the map, you can start in Europe now, and you, you choose which region you want by clicking this uh, world button up here. And you get the Earth. And I'm just gonna go back to Europe for now, because I'm in London currently. And another really cool thing about the, uh, the map now is that you can use the, the mouse wheel to scroll in, or you know, to zoom in. Which is really nice because you can, as you can see here in Europe, there's a lot of cities. So zooming in helps to be able to see all the names without them all overlapping on top of each other. Another thing you can do is double click an area and it zooms in kind of like, oops, never mind. And it zooms in kind of like uh, Google Maps. Of course, if you want to travel somewhere, you, you click the city to travel there and now you have two options you can drive or you can fly some cities you can't fly to it from where you are some cities you can't uh, drive to them so these yellow lines represent ferry lines so you can you can actually drive across these large bodies of water without having to fly and that's really important when you're touring, setting up a tour. In Europe, the buildings look different. They look more European. You have this button right here to buy a private jet. And it costs $3 million to buy the private jet and traveling with it costs $3,000 an hour. So this is definitely for when you make it big. But it does give you uh, some benefits you do travel faster and uh, less risk of losing your luggage and, and delayed travel, which can happen with commercial airlines. And uh, you know, if you if you get delayed, you might miss a gig. So having a private jet is is nice, even though it's expensive. Once you have a private jet, you can also use it as a photo backdrop at the photo studios. So it's an extra backdrop that you can use there. Now each one of the, the regions in the world, whether it's USA and Canada or Europe, and in the future other regions, uh, each, each region has its own CD charts, so if you, or album charts. If you look at this, you can choose now what charts you want to see. And also while we're here, a, a big new feature that's been added is attitudes. There's, there's, there's several things that have attitudes now. The, the musicians have attitudes, which result in song ideas that have attitudes, and that results in songs that have attitudes. And of course, each region in the world has certain attitudes that are popular or unpopular, and those are constantly changing every month. And right now, you can see on the album charts what's popular in Europe or sports cars, happiness, law and order in my particular game. And the unpopular attitudes are always the opposite, like the anti-attitudes of those things. So the opposite of sports cars, climate change, happiness, depression, law and order, anarchy. And there's several different attitudes you can choose to play with in a game. Now, this symbol right here, and you see it over here too, this, show, this is basically the attitude symbol and it's telling you uh, information about the attitudes. This, these releases, like how compatible they are with uh, in, in Europe, because that's what we're filtered on right now. So they're all green. That's why they're kind of high in the charts. They're popular attitudes. If you start to go down lower in the charts, you probably see more 
start to see orange and yellow and probably won't see a lot of red in the top 100. And over here, this tells you uh, the current attitudes that are popular or unpopular in the current uh, region that you're in, which is nice because it doesn't matter what screen you're on. You can always look here. Now for the musicians, the attitudes are right here. And if you point at those, it tells you what it's the opposite of. And you can adjust your musician's attitudes every once in a while. And each musician has a different time frame uh, that they're allowed to adjust their attitudes. So Peeper, my main musician, I can adjust one of these attitudes in four days. If I go to Maureen, um, she has one that's available to change right now. So all you have to do is uh, click one of these and decide what you want to change it to. I'll change it to partying. And now it says I can adjust it in 21 days. So in three more weeks, I can change another one to something that I want. Now you can't choose one that you already have and you can't choose one that's the opposite of the one that you're changing. So you can't go straight from, you can't flip flop. You have to do it gradually if you want to change completely. And then uh, Zoe's in 17 days. Now it shows here, red and a down arrow means that this attitude is currently unpopular in Europe because that's where we are and you can see that up here too. So if you've been playing for a while and you have certain strategies for success, uh, it's going to be a totally different strategy now. So if things don't seem to be working for you, you got to try some new things. The attitudes really mix things up and the intention is to make the game more challenging consistently throughout the whole game. Instead of uh, hitting a, a, a success point with your first uh, major record label deal and then just coasting from there because you have so much money you don't know what to do with it. Now let's go to the songwriting. Go into the studio here, the jam room. And when you write a song, there's a few new things here. One, um, there's difficulty for the, for the musical parts, the riff, rhythm, and melody. They now have a difficulty rating. And those difficulty ratings are based on whoever the writer is, whatever their play skill is. The higher their play skill, the higher, the higher potential for difficulty. And difficulty doesn't mean quality though. We still have quality as a separate number. Difficulty just affects other things in the game in different ways. You, you can still have high quality songs that are easy to play and vice versa. Really difficult songs that are not high quality. And so if you start um, picking the uh, parts here, not only does it show you the song quality, but it shows you the song difficulty. And when you add lyrics, now the lyrics have a, an attitude. The attitudes for all the different lyrical ideas come from whoever wrote it. It, it takes one of, their three random, one of the three attitudes that they have and randomly picks one and assigns it to the, to the uh, idea. So when you finish a song, and you also have to choose your energy level as usual. So now what this song would end up being is it would have a straight edge attitude, it would have a high energy attitude, and it doesn't have a difficulty attitude because it's in the middle. But if it was low difficulty, it would be basic musicianship. If it was high difficulty, it would be technical musicianship. So all of those attitudes are attached to that song when you write it, and that helps uh, influence the, the audience reactions when you play them at gigs and also how they uh, affect CD sales. So it, it does make a difference. Now you don't have to have songs that are all popular attitudes to be successful still, but it does help. Um, and I also want to try to avoid the unpopular attitudes because that will hurt you. So somewhere in the middle, like neutral, is right where the old version of the game kind of worked all the time. So if you see yellow for your songs, you don't have, uh, let me look at my song list. I have yellow here. That just means, see the attitudes here. Uh, they don't have any popular or unpopular attitudes, so they're just yellow, which is average. And that's not bad, it's just not giving you much bonus here. Now if I go to switch to U USA and Canada, you can see they have different uh, 
attitudes that are popular. So it's a little bit green on some of those. Now, on the when you're practicing, the play skill of your musicians affects um, the maximum play skill that the song can go as well, based on the difficulty of the song. So now you have the difficulty. So you can see here that uh, this is a 78 difficulty song or an 88 difficulty song. It's very high difficulty. So the play skill is going to be limited by that based on the play skill of my musicians. And if you're at the maximum play skill you can be, and I don't have any good examples in here, but it'll be green. So, you know, 80 might be the highest I can practice this play skill of this song because of the difficulty. And it would say 80 and it would be green until I add more uh, playing skill to the, uh, to the skills here. See, she's pretty high, she's pretty high, and they're all pretty high, so that's why I have, have these uh, songs with uh, high play skill, high difficulty. Something else you, you may have noticed on that previous screen uh, that I didn't mention yet is uh, songwriting as a skill has been split into two skills, writing music and writing lyrics. So now we have seven total skills instead of six. Now, because of that and other factors in the game, there's now a level cap of 50 instead of 30. But the experience curve to get there is gets a lot steeper after you get to le past level 20 or so. Level 20 in this version is about where you were in level 30 of the previous version. So it's gonna be um, still pretty easy to get to 20. And then from there, it gets harder and harder to, to level up. But because of all the extra levels, you get more skill points that you can distribute among the skills here. Now, if you're loading a save game from a previous uh, version of the game before, before this version, you'll get an option up here. There will be a button right here that you can click one time to, to basically refund all of your skill points and then redistribute them however you want. And you'll also have that opportunity to choose writing lyrics as your aptitude, since that didn't exist before. So if you want to keep playing with an old game that you had, uh, instead of starting a new one, you can do that and still use these new features with the lyrics and stuff. Now I did a few things for uh, colorblind friendliness. Uh, by request, um, we, we have a couple of um, colorblind players, and that's pretty common, I guess. I'm not colorblind, so I don't typically think of it, um, but it totally makes sense when somebody requests it. Now, we, one thing was um, the, the attitudes. So originally, I was just color coding everything. You know, green is positive, red is negative, yellow is neutral, but it's hard for, for colorblind people to see that. So now, negative, red, is also a down arrow, and positive is an up arrow, and that's why you see all of these arrows up here. Also, the color of the relationship lines here is, is not just only color, but now thickness. You can see if it's red, it's a really bad relationship, it's gonna be very thin line and red. And then as it gets better, it gets thicker. So that's another visual indication here. It also applies when you're recruiting musicians at a music store. So when you click on them and it shows their current compatibility with your, with your current band members in different colors, now it's not just colors, it shows a percentage next to it. Another cool new feature is the improved dialogue for showing your weekly CD sales. So in, in the old version, it just showed it on the standard alert dialogue box. And if you had several releases, it would jam them all into one. And so after a while, it just wouldn't fit anymore if you had too many. So this is a lot nicer. It lets you scroll if you, if you need to. And it shows the album cover on one side and the region for the chart on each side, because remember each region has its own chart. And it now shows how much money you earned in royalties, including how much was paid to former band members. Because if somebody in the band uh, helped write songs and record songs and they're no longer in the band, they still get paid. So this explains it all better now. Endorsements has been changed um, quite a bit. Now it's pay per 1,000 audience and uh, the, the calculations for determining how much you get 
it was it was totally revamped. So uh, you'll you'll get a pop up when you load an old game that that tells you that. And so all of your endorsement information will be gone. So all you have to do is set your manager to find endorsements, and he'll start finding new endorsements with the new system. So this makes more sense now because some people in the old system were were bringing in thousands of dollars per gig, uh, and it just it was just out of balance. So this is um, more more in balance because it's. The more people you play in front of, the more money you make, and that makes sense. During the development of this big new update, um, by request of some of the players, I started a Patreon page. And so far, there's uh, a good handful of patrons, and I and I thank everybody for all the support. You know, this is this is basically people who want to help support further development of the game like this, like this big update. Um, but you know, you only buy the game once. And there's no DLC, there's no extra, you know, expansion packs that I'm charging for. So once you have it, you get all these updates. So a lot of people just want to um, show their appreciation, and I appreciate that very much. And if you uh, click up here on the ticket on the main menu, now this part's not new, but there's a patrons tab over here now. And if you become a patron, your name will be added here. But not only this, the in the game. Your name will be added to a park or a hospital or an arena as the name of that instead of using an uh, internally randomly generated name. So this is kind of cool to see your name there. Oh, I'm just gonna go down the list of a few other points here uh, that a lot of these things are by request of people or just quality of life enhancements and there's a lot of small bug fixes and a lot of quality of life enhancements that have gone into this uh, version since the old version and I can't even list them all but I'm gonna list a few highlights uh, your musicians and your band will no longer quit your band while you're on the middle of a tour I know that was that was always a big problem you know you're in the middle of a tour somebody's getting unhappy and then they leave in the middle of the tour and they just throws off your playing skill for everything especially when you hire a replacement and and it just the rest of the tour becomes a disaster. Well, now they'll tell you that they want to quit, but that they're going to quit at the end of the tour. But this also gives you an opportunity to try to improve their happiness before the end of the tour because they could have a change of heart. On major contracts, when it's your first major contract, usually it's got a, uh, a, re a required producer. The label wants you to use a certain producer in a certain city. And that's pretty normal, but if you have a lot of production skill points for one of your characters and you want to just self-produce, save money, you can do that now. There's a checkbox that gives you an option to remove that producer requirement, but if you do that, you only get 30% of the recording advance amount. So you can't really afford to do it if, it's, if you don't have a lot of money and you need that advance for studio costs. But if you have plenty of money, maybe it's your second or third album and you have enough money in the bank to self-fund it, then it's, it's a good idea to actually do that because not only do you save money on the recording, but you're gonna get more money in royalties because you don't have that much of the advance to pay back. It's that much less that you have to pay back before you start earning the royalties. By request, there's an option now to disable the internal soundtrack songs because, you know, you for a while now, you could uh, link to a folder outside the game from the settings dialog that you can fill with, you know, MP3s, WAV files, uh, I think OGS, to have your own songs in the soundtrack, whatever songs you want to be in the soundtrack. But you couldn't turn off the built-in ones. Well, now there's a checkbox on there to turn that off if you don't want to hear the built-in ones. Also, by popular demand, the ability for keyboard players to busk, and I always wanted to do that. It was just just kind of represented a technical hurdle that I needed to get over and I did that. So now they can busk with Grandpa's synth, go shopping. There's there's several new achievements added to the game uh, related to a lot of things, you know, with flights and different regions and higher levels that you can get to. Um, so there's, there's several different new achievements. And oh, finally, last but not least, 
This version is now being built with Unity 2020 instead of Unity 2018. Now, for people who aren't techies or whatever, it probably doesn't mean anything, but the reason for doing that mainly is because a lot of people were having memory issues with the game and it would, after play, especially after playing for a while, a couple hours, and some people would only take 15 minutes, and it would just have a random crash. And when I looked at the logs, it just looked like memory issues. So after doing some research, I decided to try Unity 2020 because it said it had improvements and fixes for those and memory leaks or whatever Unity had. And it seems like it's helped. People that have had problems with those random crashes, uh, they've either gone away completely or they're very rare now. So that's a good thing. Okay, well, thanks for buying the game and thanks for watching this video. I know it's a little bit long, but there's a lot of changes in this big update and this is the kind of stuff that I want to keep on doing. As long as people are buying the game and playing the game, we have an amazing community. I, I haven't seen a, a a community for a game this great before ever. I mean, everybody is so friendly. Uh, there's there's no flaming. Is everybody's just joking and having fun? It's it's great, uh, and I appreciate it. I'm Todd from Gilla Games. Um, don't forget to uh, check out Patreon if you're interested, and uh, check us out on Facebook and YouTube, and like and subscribe, and most of all, tell your friends. All right, thanks for watching.